Hello, and welcome to our notes on tectonic plates and mantle convection. Remember, you can stop, pause, and rewind this video as much or as little as you need to in order to really understand the concepts that we're covering. Remember, I do make all of the end of lesson quizzes based on the notes, so please take very thorough notes and make sure you understand the information before moving on. If you have any questions, please come and ask me. So what is a tectonic plate? Um, the crust of the earth is not one solid rock. We've talked about this in class. Uh, it's actually made up of tectonic plates. So if we look at the earth, we can kind of envision it like a cracked hard-boiled egg. So we have these plates that are sitting on it on the outside. Now, what exactly is the plate? Uh, a tectonic plate is also called sometimes a lithospheric plate because it's made of the lithosphere. It's a massive, uh, huge, irregularly shaped slab of solid rock. So it is um, made of the lithosphere, that uh, crust and the upper part of the mantle. So here we have our lithospheric plates around the world, again like an eggshell, and it is both the crust, so whether that's continental or oceanic, and the upper part of the upper mantle, the lithosphere, this whole section is solid. It floats on the asthenosphere. So how many are there? I showed you a picture there, it looked like there were several. How many are there exactly? The number of plates and how big they are and their shapes um, and even how they're moving change throughout Earth's history. Uh, and that's been true throughout history and it is still con true. Right now, most scientists agree that there are 15 major plates. But if you look this up on the internet and Google it, you will find numbers as low as 12 and as high as 20. Um, but 15 seems to be the most uh, recognized number. And here's a picture that shows you some of those different plates, each color being a different plate. Now, we break those plates into a couple categories. There are primary or what are called major plates. There are seven plates that basically make up the bulk of the continents and the oceans. They take up the majority of the surface of the earth. And they've here are the names. Uh, we've got the African plate right here, and the Antarctic plate, which is this huge plate bound down here. Um, it looks bigger than it really is because remember, this is a flattened out map, and the Earth is actually a globe. So this is down at the bottom of the, of, of the globe, and so it would actually be much smaller. There's the Eurasian plate, which is Europe and Asia, uh, and you can see it wraps around here. There's the Australian plate. North American plate where we live on. Uh, almost the entire United States is on the North American plate, except for a little part of California right here, which we happen to be on, and we are on the Pacific plate. Uh, and then there's also the South American plate. Those are the seven major plates. But there are minor plates also. These are smaller, and they don't have nearly as big a land area. This word comprise means to make up, so they don't make up as big a land area. Um, here are those eight. And uh, you'll notice when I look at them, they are smaller. So we have um, the Arabian plate, which is this little yellow one here, and the Caribbean plate right here, the Cocos plate, the Indian plate, the Juan de Fuca plate, the Nazca plate, which is actually a fairly large plate, um, the Philippine Sea plate, and the Scotia plate. So those 15 make up basically the entire crust of the Earth. Uh, there are what we call tertiary plates, and these are mostly little tiny microplates. They're either parts of larger plates that are breaking off, or they're the remains of, of larger ancient plates that are being consumed. Um, there are over 60 tertiary plates recognized. 
But again, they're so tiny, they don't even show up on the map. They, they don't take up a significant portion of the crust of the Earth. So we're not going to look at names or anything like that. Um, just know that there are little minor slivers of, of plates that are being broken off that do, they're, they're technically their own plate, but we don't worry about the names. Now again, these plates are floating on the asthenosphere. So they're floating on the mantle of the Earth. And they don't stay still. We saw with the last lesson with Pangaea and the theory of continental drift that they're moving. So now we get to the question that Alfred Wegener couldn't answer. How do they move? Um, they move by a process called mantle convection. It is the slow creeping motion of the Earth's lower mantle and the asthenosphere that's caused by convection currents, which carries heat from the interior of the Earth to the surface. So we'll go into this in depth here in a moment, but we have the inner core, we have the outer core, and then we have the mantle, and we get these convection currents, which move the plates on the surface of the Earth. So what is convection, first of all? Let's make sure you understand. Convection is a mode of heat transfer. So if you were to have a heater in your room, in your bedroom, because it's cold, and that heat is in a corner, but eventually it heats up the whole room, what's happening is there is being heat transfer between all those air molecules, and that is convection. Um, it includes the movement of molecules of the material, and it only happens in liquids and gases. So this would never happen in a solid, because the molecules can't move. But here's an example in water, where we heat up the water on the bottom and it moves to where it was cooler. It was coolest up here, farthest from the flame. And then uh, those cold molecules are forced down to be heated. How exactly does it work? So a substance's temperature gets increased. So we heat something. When that happens, it becomes less dense. So now we're going back to the density notes where we talked about uh, when something's less dense, it means the molecules are not as close together. So when it becomes less dense, um, it will actually rise. As the temperature then goes down and the heat energy is transferred to everything else that's surrounding, the substance becomes more dense. Those molecules lose their energy, they get closer together, and it then sinks. So the rising and sinking sets up this circular convection current. Let me show you, uh, put it in a different way. So we have, we're going to use water as an example because that's the picture I showed you. Um, but this happens in the mantle of the earth. The warm water is less dense. It contains less molecules and they are not as close to each other. Um, they're excited and they move faster and they're moving away from each other. So we have these molecules that start to move away. The cooler water so in this case, the, the water that was farthest from the flame is more dense and it contains more molecules and they're closer to each other and they don't move as much, so they're more dense. So again, from our density la um, lesson, we know that the less dense will float on the more dense. So let's go back for a moment and look at our, our convection here. We're making this water that's closest to the flame, less dense because we're heating it up and those molecules are spreading apart and they're less dense. So it wants to float. So it's going to rise to the top. The water that was at the top is the coldest. So those molecules have the least amount of energy. They're the closest together and they want to sink. So what we have is the hot water rises, the cold water sinks. But now, when this water gets to the top, it starts to lose its, its heat, and it becomes cool. And this water that came down to the bottom gets heated by the flame, and it wants to rise. So we get these little currents, or what are called convection cells, which move the water. So let's look at it in the earth. We don't have a flame, like on the stove to heat up the mantle, but we do have the inner and the outer core. And the inner and outer core, if you remember from our layers of the earth notes, 
are the hottest part of the earth. Um, the, the inner and outer core can get as high as 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost as hot as the surface of the sun. So the mantle, which is magma, the ones that are closest to the core get heated up. And because it's heated, that magma rises. But when it gets to the crust, it starts to lose that heat. And when it starts to lose that heat, it becomes more dense and it returns to the core. And we get this happening over thousands and thousands of years. The mantle does not move quickly like water. It goes very slowly, but it continues to heat up by the core and get less dense. So it rises. It loses its heat, so it becomes more dense, and it sinks. Then it heats up, becomes less dense, and rises. Becomes more, loses heat, and becomes more dense, and sinks. And just like if you were at the beach, and there was a current underneath you, like a riptide, that pulls you because you're on the surface, the same thing happens to the lithospheric plates that are riding on top of the mantle. As the mantle is moving, it's working just like a riptide or a current in the ocean, and it pulls along that lithospheric plate and moves it. Now, when two plates move apart like this, there's a gap, and what happens? The mantle comes up and makes new land. And when those plates come together like this, one of them will always get pushed back down into the mantle. And if that gets pushed back in the mantle, the mantle will eventually uh, melt it and it will become part of the magma again. We will go way more in depth into what happens here at these plate boundaries in next lesson. But just know, just understand the process by which this convection current happens and the lithospheric plates are being moved. Here's a little um, animation to show you. The blue represents the heat. So we get hot in the red, and as you start to move up, it cools off, and then it sinks, and then it heats up when it gets to the core, and it comes back up. And so there are these convection currents going on all the time in our mantle. And those convection currents are, are moving the tectonic plates around the surface of the Earth. If you have any questions at all about what a tectonic plate is, how many there are, or where they're found, or what convection is, or how these convection currents happen in the Earth, please, please, please talk to me or one of your other classmates to clarify it. Uh, and I will see you in class. I hope you enjoyed the lesson.